Well, greetings again. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society. And I want to talk to you tonight about learning to use the step-down arch wire. It's a very important arch wire to learn to use, especially if you're working on children. If you're doing children's work, you almost have to learn how to, to use this type of arch wire. So watch this video. It's not a difficult wire to use, but you can expand the arch with it. You can contract it. You can intrude the anterior teeth, line them up, open it up. It's, it's so many things you can do. And you use this on the bottom arch. Now if you use it on the upper, we call it an upper step, up arch wire, but you just don't use them very much. Let's just watch this video and I'll try to get through it as uh, fast as we can here. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, let's uh, get going on it here. There's a young lady, and this, this was done back in, in the 70s, early 70s. But it's still just as important and will continue to be important for years to come. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Now, the, you take a look at this young lady's arch. Uh, this, the models or the mouth, you can look at that. I can almost look at them and tell without seeing exactly what you're going to do. This is kind of caved in on the sides over here. See, like this. And you're going to have to line up your six-year motors back here in. And then you drop, come off of them and drop it down, come up to the cuspid tooth, come across this way, and go down again, uh, get to the cuspid, go down again, and then back to the six-year molar. And you're going to work on these lower arches. You're going to intrude them, and you're going to pick up these upper teeth like this and work on them with this irregular arch wire going across there. So let's, let's get started on it right quick. Now you can, I can tell all of this is wrong. This is a mouth breather. This is a young lady who does not put the tongue in the right place. And it, it makes the narrow, upper arch narrow. And a lot of times it's a lot more narrow than the lower arch. And you have to widen or match up both arches before you can get through. On the right and the left, side of the mouth the same way the bicuspids are all coming in this way like this you're going to have to expand this upper arch we'll do that with and you can start early uh, while they're still in their mixed dentition uh, with a step down arch so if you're working on kids if you don't know how to do orthodontics and you're working on kids you really learn how to need to learn how to use it. I don't care if you're a pediatric dentist, uh, and unless you've got an orthodontist hired in your office, you ought to know how to do it yourself. So let's go now to uh, another view here. When you just look at this upper arch, and you see the, uh, the, the way the mouth is like this, and the teeth are kind of in, in this fashion, the tongue is not going up in here and doing this. So you got a tongue thruster, you got a problem case, you usually have a breathing problem that you have to get all these things straightened out on this person to get uh, going uh, to do that. Now the six year motors are in there. You could, now you can go ahead and band, you know, we really had this was back when before we had brackets now. So we have to ban this case. Now I look at the lower arch, the key for the end on the lower arch even, even though it's wider, the tongue stays down here when you're breathing and it widens this out a little bit, but not much. And these teeth, second by customers are coming in and uh, you've got the four lower anterior teeth right in here, the cuspids. And here's the first by, the second by, and these are six-year molars that are there. 
So we're going to come back. And that's what you know to start with. So we just start off with this. So we banded the upper four anteriors and the six-year motor, and we could just have an arch wire that just ran straight across here, and you didn't bend it. But if you use that on the bottom, you would chew on this wire and bend it. So we come out of the motor and go straight down with it, and you have to be able to pull enough off it and then come up like this and come over. Now you can take this down and across and up arch wire and expand it out like this. I'm going to show you that just on a, a white screen. If we come out with a wire like this, and this is your bicuspid bracket there, and you come across to the molar, and you come up, and you've got your molar tube right in here, the wire is going in there. If you take that arch wire and expand it out like this, it'll be this way. Now when you push it together, it'll make the bottom of it go out like that. And that wire will expand. You can also put a loop in them up here and then make this wire down, go down here. You can intrude the anterior teeth with it. And you can expand it. If you want to contract it, you just run your loop, your wires, and then you pull this over. When you're retracting or closing space with the step-down arch, the bottom of it will wear up like this. It'll pull the tooth forward, and it's and it'll bring the root forward along with the tooth. The step-down arch will carry the crown and the root parallel, and this is something you need to learn to do. And so I hope you can pick it up from this uh, video or anything else that we use. So we've bracketed these teeth. I don't like these double bread. We show you we use little single brackets. And maybe on the upper centrals we use double ones, but we like the little single ones. And if you're just starting off, you pick the single brackets with wings on them. So anyway, here is the arch now. It's right out, coming right out of the, of the motor tube. Comes right up here. It comes up into the back, into the lateral here, because this is the cuspid, and it fits in here. So we, if we need some space in here, we just open this up. That's all we have to do. And if you open it and push it together, this bottom will swing down like that. And it, it'll expand, it'll contract, and it will intrude. And that is the a useful thing to have. And then you can work, work off your six-year motors and then line up your four upper and four lower anteriors while you're waiting on these teeth to erupt into the mouth. Now, if you're not a If you're not an orthodontist and you don't know how to do that, how are you going to do this without getting into orthodontics? Your dentistry and orthodontics goes hand in hand. You have to put the get in here with your orthodontics to do the dentistry properly for that person. And watch that go out there. This is what I've tried to hammer home my whole life, and I, I can't get the pediatric department to start teaching some interceptive, preventive orthodontics. That's what you really need to know if you're working on children at all. I don't care if you're a general dentist, you can take this and learn it as I did. Now in here we, I think we finally bracketed the cuspid tooth on the lower. And we, you can band it, hook it up to it, drop down, still hold the space. It is a space maintainer, a space gainer, a space reducer, a space and you can elevate or raise, you can raise or lower the anterior teeth. Normally you're, in, you're having to lower them down like that 
and you can coordinate the arches with this step down arch. Now, we use, once in a while we we'll use one on the upper, but it's very rare that we we'll do that. Now, watch this. We're going to go from this molar. We go out, we drop down, bring this wire around, and hook it up over here. But well, this is the upper, I'm sorry. We're just going to run an arch wire around here. And we'll expand this. And we'll bracket these teeth, pull them through that wire, and expand them out to that point. So you can watch how much we expand those teeth. And by the way, we move them where there is no bone. And that is done thousands of times by people. And so that is something you need to know the teeth will bring their bone structure with them. If you move them out there, just watch this. And watch the arch form as the tongue goes back into this place and they start breathing correctly. Now on the lower, we come out on the lower six-year motor, drop down, come across this way, and we come up at the lateral. And we can expand, we can contract, we can lower the anterior, and we can work on these teeth out here and have control of them. And it's so much better than having a lingual arch or all stuff like that. You cannot do as much with that as you can. Ban the six-year motors. Now, uh, even so, uh, when we've got brackets, we still ban six-year motors. And then you can put brackets on these teeth down here and line them up and wait and you can maintain this space or you can make it smaller, you can make it bigger and you can expand it out in this direction and you can intrude this, these tissues out here. All this stuff you can do with this single arch wire. It does, it does that. And let's go to the next uh, deal. Up above we're going to have the arch wire come out here. We'll move these teeth out to it and we'll expand the arch and we can elevate it or open the bite. And this is the lower now we're back to. We've got the cuspid banded here. This will come in. We'll have to get these teeth in a little more before we move, uh, do that one and the second molars will be coming in. Now this is before the child is 12 years of age. So you think, don't start the case until they're 12 or 14. You've waited too long to really bring this case around before they're grown. So it takes a few years of working with them. You don't have to see them very often. Now, here we've bracketed the, the, upper, the upper teeth. Here the step-down arch, we're still using it. It's 1973. I think we started this in 72 or something, something like that. And that step down arch is a wonderful arch to use. You hardly ever bend it by chewing food over here. If you did that up above, you didn't have teeth, you'd bend that wire. So we don't use them up above. You don't need to. Now here it is, we still have those three teeth out so we're going to go in here and we'll back bracket those other teeth. So here we've come in now and on the upper and we've banded these teeth and we're bringing them out to this arch wire. And that'll move these teeth out. And so we'll move them out and bring the roots and everything and watch the change that's going to take place in this. And that is the airway you're enlarging the airway and you bring the roots with the teeth and you do that with a rectangular wire. You put a little uh, buckled root tarp on it. Now here we've got this just about ready to go in and band these teeth right here and uh, we're probably waiting and to get we get this one in over here in the cusp before we do the banding. So here it is 1974 and we have banded all these teeth. Now, if you're sending this child to an orthodontist, they're not going to do all this. 
I mean, you can't go back and forth, back and forth, unless you're hired an orthodontist to work in your office. Now, some groups of pediatric dentists do hire orthodontists. Just learn how to do it yourself, and you can do it just as good. In fact, you learn how to do it better. If you have an open bite or something, we got something. Class two, you can correct with that too as we go with this. We have opened the bite. When we started, it was down, way down here. We've opened the bite with these arch wires. Expanded, we expanded, retracted, intruded, any, any movement you want of the teeth with that wire. So now we've got about a, and this is about as good a class one as you're gonna get with those teeth that drop it into those uh, slots. Now look at this arch. We have developed this out part of the way, and this is considerably larger than it was when we started. When we brought it out with this arch, well, this will continue to expand out here as we go along. When we get into a rectangular wire, we'll bring the roots of these teeth out with the crowns, and that widens the airway for that person. Now watch this. Now the lower arch, we finally got these banded. I don't have a date on this, but they're banded out here. So we have kept this space as a space maintainer, space gainer, a space retractor, an intruder. It's it can be used for all the things you need to know and do and working with kids like this. And so I wanted to touch on this. For goodness sakes, if you're a pediatric dentist, learn to do some orthodontics and do this simple stuff yourself. Because you have to do it along with your dentistry and the time you're seeing this child and break the breathing habit and whatever, have the adenoids taken care of, the airway, and work on everything that the, the thumb sucking, the fingers and the lip biting and different things that you're working with and you're doing the orthodontics at the same time. You don't have to spend a lot of time with them and just take it gradually, make sure they're cleaning their teeth and take care of it properly. And this is 1974, eight of 74, and we are sitting over here We've got everything done. We're just waiting on 12 year motors. If you have any problem with this, we know how to upright that and bring those in. And at this point, I don't see any wisdom teeth forming on this child. So let's kind of look at these uh, teeth. Now, here it is, 1975. We still have bands on the upper motors. We probably got an upper retainer in there and a bite plate on that upper retainer holding them up and waiting on the upper second motor. So we make our retainer go around it and uh, we go up in the roof of the retainer and come around and have room for this tooth to come on into the mouth. I see no wisdom teeth developing. So it's 75. So we've been in here for about uh, three or four years. You work with this child and you need to be doing the orthodontics along with taking care of cleaning and tearing, checking and taking care of their teeth and carrying it through like that. You don't need to be sitting around or sending it to somebody else and getting something done or, unless you can hire an orthodontist. Then the orthodontists don't stay in there long enough to treat children a lot of times and you have to show them what you want to do, want them to do. Now here it is, 19, Let's see, this was uh, 70, I don't know what. This is 10, 70. Anyway, this is when we finished the case. It was about four years, four to five years later, we have the teeth lined up now. And you've got this child breathing right, Their, the teeth are functioning right, they're swallowing right, they're doing everything and you have more a retainer with a bite plate on it. Now you see where the bite was to start with a deep bite. You have intruded these and you opened it or expanded whatever you need to do with it. 
and you can then line up these teeth like that with a step down arch. And from that to that. And that is a very good improvement and that's something you can do if you do it yourself. It takes several years. I needed to rotate that tooth a little more right there. Sir, so we got 12 year motors in there. So here the young lady is after we got through. I thank you for watching and for goodness sakes, if you're working on children, learn to do these simple orthodontic cases and do them because you need to do them along as you're taking care of their teeth and their child is developing and you see them often and you can take care of them and it takes some time to do it and you come out with a much, much better deal. The profile's perfect and fine. Thanks for watching and I'm going to sign out now and we'll see you next time, hopefully. And join our deal and subscribe to our channel. That's what I want you to do. And I'm going to close out.